Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here today. Can't wait to get into our training Thursday edition of the Cabral Concept, where we are going to be answering the question once and for all, should you do fasted workouts or fasted exercise? And as always, what we're going to do on the show today is peel back that onion, meaning that we're not just going to say yes for everyone, no for everyone. We're going to tell you who it's best for, who it's not best for, and also what you want those workouts to be in order to maximize those results. So really excited about today's show. Again, you know that anytime I get to Go back to my roots, talk about exercise, talk about working out. It's a good day. So let's get right into it. So as I said before, that anyone that gives you just completely uh, black and white answers is leaving out the majority of the population, okay? So it's great if it works for you. It's like, hey, should I, you know, I get this a lot. Should I base my diet off of my DNA? Well, that's a, that's a big assumption, right? That's assuming that you have nothing wrong with your gut whatsoever, right? That you have no food sensitivity. That's, that's, you have to be careful there. I like the DNA for looking at the diet, but there's also a bit more work that needs to be done. Assessing food sensitivities, assessing candida, SIBO, small intestinal bacteria, overgrowth, H. pylori, parasites, right? We need to look at that a, a bit more. So it's nuanced. Everything, if you want the actual answer, everything in life is a bit nuanced. So it's no different than should you work out while fasted or not. So I'm going to take you through really simple, really easy what you'll want to look at and really think about in your mind is your goal, right? So that's what matters first. If someone tells you to go on the XYZ diet, you should know why you're going on that diet, right? It's not just like, oh, I'm going to go on the diet because, you know, it's the cool thing to do. Like, that's, hey, that's, that's what we're going to do. Like, everyone at my gym is doing carnivore, so, hey, I'm just going to only eat meat too. Like, that's, that's going to be what I do. Okay, well, those are always dangerous assumptions to do something that someone else is doing, even if they're getting good results, if you don't know the reason why, right? So I like to give a reason why. So all I want you to do is I want you to know your why. So what is your goal? And then we can talk about if fasting cardio is right for you. Are you looking to lose weight? That's a goal. Are you looking to gain weight? That's a goal. Are you looking to lower blood pressure? What about increased blood pressure? Those are two very different goals. One, a person feels completely exhausted and wiped out with low blood pressure. And the other person has a lot more tension in their body, right? They can feel it. They can feel it so much so that it can make the skin start to tingle. So what about blood sugar? Do you have high blood sugar, especially between meals or upon waking? Do you have low blood sugar? It's going to matter. Do you have uh, low levels of energy? Is that why you might want to do fasted cardio? Or do you have higher levels of energy? Should you work out fasted if you have high levels of energy? What about adding muscle? Is that part of the equation? What about increasing strength or stamina or improving for an event, right, or sport? So these are all things that you need to think about. What is my goal, all right? What is my goal with exercise? If you are exercising just for overall longevity and you just want to be healthy and you want to look at these things, okay, we'll take a look at that as well. But that's not really a goal. It's a good goal. You want to move your body. No doubt about it. You want to move your body. But really, is the question, should you be doing fasted cardio right for you? Well, if the main goal is, hey, I just want to be overall healthy, check out a subcategory. Look at your overall health. How are your adrenals doing? How's your thyroid doing? How are your neurotransmitters doing? You can start to look at these you know, at-home lab testing numbers as well to say, hey, should I be working any of these things as well? Should you use a simple at-home glucometer to look at your blood sugar in the morning, right? So when a lot of people are talking about fasted cardio, they're talking about, or fasted workouts, they're talking about what? A workout first thing in the morning. It's really the only time you're fasted. So I want to break that myth up first. If you are doing a workout before dinner and you're not having anything since lunch, it's not really fasted, right? I mean, it's fasted, yes. You haven't eaten for three to four hours, maybe, before your workout, but it's not really fasted. I mean, I just want to share that with you. So it's, that's a totally different topic and discussion, and use it for this one. Like you'll, you'll, and I'll explain how, but it's not truly fasted. Fasted means that you really haven't eaten anything 
for 12 hours, right? When you do fasted blood work, they don't ask you to fast for three hours from lunch to do it at four o'clock. When they say fasted blood work, when your physician tells you, I want you to do your blood work fasted, that means you haven't eaten anything at least since midnight the night before, right? If your blood work is eight, 10 o'clock in the morning, but typically they want 12 hours, which is what I would say. I want 12 hours of fasting. Easy, blood work at eight o'clock, nine o'clock the next morning. Well, just don't eat from eight o'clock, nine o'clock the night before, right? And that's what we're talking about. And that's because the body reacts differently when there is no added food, glucose, amino acids, or fatty acids, right? Your macros, right? You get your fat, your protein, those are your amino acids, and you've got your carbs, which is your glucose. Okay. So when you don't have that ready fuel supply and you've used a lot of it overnight, your body will react differently, right? So let's talk about how it will react differently real quick before we give you who it's best for. Your body will react differently if you work out and push it. You know, we're not talking about going for a walk around the block. We're talking about doing a workout, right? It could be cardio, hard cardio, or it could be a weight workout. So what it's going to do is the less fuel it has, the more stressed it will be. Just want to throw that out there. The less fuel it has, the more stressed it will be. And that's because workout is a stressor. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I will link up today. So please go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2071. And I'm going to link up my podcast on hermetic stressors. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them today. Exercise is a hermetic stressor. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing, right? That's it. And none of a good thing is not a good thing, right? So exercise is good. Too much of it is not good. It's too much of a stressor on the body, like a, a triathlon. An Ironman triathlon is too much of it. People will try to convince you otherwise. No, their bodies are oxidizing and breaking down at much more rapid rates. I train triathletes. I love triathletes. I mean, they are driven people. I train and work with ultra marathoners. They are driven people. Are they doing their body a service? No, it's, it's highly oxidative doing that much exercise. It's their choice. We're all humans. We get to make choices. That's okay. My job is then to support them to the greatest degree. Okay, then on the other side, you have people that don't work out at all. You're not adding any hermetic stress or the body's getting weaker. You want to be somewhere in the middle for you. What works for you, right? So let's, let's talk about that. So we know that we want to work out. Now, if we say working out with no food in your stomach, fasting for 12 hours, that's going to be a greater stress on the body. And that's because the body doesn't have any fuel ready to use to be broken down. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. We're going to go through who it's a good thing or a bad thing for. So what it needs to do is it needs to find fuel somewhere. You don't get to just produce energy because it's, you know, it's magical. Like you have magic energy in your body. You're producing energy from stress hormones, norepinephrine and cortisol. They're getting the heart rate pumping. They're constricting blood vessels. They're improving circulation. They are uh, breaking down stored glucose, which is glycogen in your liver or in your muscles. That's what they're doing. Dopamine levels are beginning to rise. Uh, your body is, you know, your body is starting to move hard, right? It's starting to work hard. So all these neuro, the neurochemicals are beginning to be produced in your body, and your body has to find a fuel source. Sure, you might burn ketones. That's it's more of a misnomer than anything. You're burning ketones if you're doing kind of a slower workout, more of an endurance workout. Sure, you'll burn some during a more anaerobic workout, but you're going to break down glycogen. You're certainly going to look for glucose reserves because your body is working in a system of fast glycolysis, and it's not going to be able to use ketones during that process. So please don't let people convince you otherwise of that. That is simply not a physiological possibility of the human body. Now, again, even when you're in more, more demanding territory of uh, burning more sugar, you're still going to be burning some more fat. And even when you're more of what's the so-called fat burning zone, you're still going to be burning some sugar too. It's not a hundred percent and zero. That's not typically how it works. It's just more graded on one side, whether it's anaerobic, right? Or whether it's aerobic and aerobic is going to be easier to, yes, use ketones and to use uh, other fuel sources besides sugar. So namely oxygen is one of them. So let's, let's look at this. Depending on your goal and the level of stress you want to add to your body and whether you want to work out with fuel in your system or not will dictate the answer, which means there is no all for one. So who should not work out fasted? Now, remember, if you're working with a coach, 
a personal trainer, strength and conditioning coach, integrative health practitioner, or someone that knows what they are talking about and they are qualified to give you the right answer, then you go by them. Because there's a time and place for everything. But in general, the people who do not want to work out fasted are those people that are more of the ectomorph or vata body type. Very thin joints. They lose weight easily. They can typically eat carbohydrates without gaining weight. If that person is working out fasted, they're typically going to trend more towards lower blood sugar or higher glycemia. And they're already typically going to trend more towards higher levels of stress, sometimes higher levels of anxiety, but not always. And and that can be higher levels of norepinephrine and cortisol. So we already know by doing a really hard workout, we're going to raise cortisol, right? So that's not, and that's not an ideal world for this person who's already particularly maybe higher in stress hormones. So anyone that's higher stress, uh, they lose weight easily. They're more catabolic, if you know what that word means. And we've talked about that on previous shows as well. Um, or if you're someone that gets brain fog due to... Uh, lower adrenal output due to meaning that lower cortisol, HPA axis dysfunction, or you're someone that might have lower thyroid due to cortisol based issues. Um, it's something to look at and say, Hey, do I want to add more stress on my body? If I already know that I'm already at a lowered metabolic rate with thyroid. And, um, and that's because of imbalanced cortisol levels, something to look at, something to think about. Okay. Uh, who else? If you trend more towards lower blood sugar, you wake up in the morning, regardless of whether you're a Vata body type or Pizza body type or Kapha body type, and your blood sugar is typically in the lower 70s. You don't need to work out fasted unless for, you have a specific reason, which we'll get to in a moment, which is one of the other goals. All right. So again, the goal of something is never do to do something for the sake of doing something. Right? That's not the goal. The goal of exercise or eating healthy or whatever it is, is to achieve a specific result. So if your goal is to add muscle, the most efficient way to add muscle is to already keep the muscle you have on and then create a surplus. So you don't want to be having the possibility that when you are fasted and going to work out, that your body breaks down muscle tissue in order to access stored amino acids and or glycogen, which is glucose. So the ideal thing would not be to work out fasted if you're trying to add muscle. There are, of course, times and places for walking for a longer distance early in the morning, doing some light cardio for bodybuilders looking to lean down. All sorts of different, again, possibilities. I'm giving you the general synopsis. So essentially, you do not want to do fasted workouts if you're already higher stress, if you're already losing weight, uh, if you're already lower blood sugar, uh, if you're already fatigued because of thyroid or adrenal-based issues, uh, and you're looking to potentially add muscle, not lose weight. All right? So now who should work out potentially fasted. Again, if healthy, right? If the individual is healthy. Well, those people looking to lose weight. Why? Because working out is going to put you into more of a catabolic state. You might say, well, that's not true. It puts you in more of an anabolic state because you're building muscle. That's not true. Uh, you are in more of a catabolic state while you are working out. You're in an anabolic state and adding muscle when you're asleep and you're eating and when you're resting and recovering. That's when you're in the anabolic state. The actual workout is catabolic. So if you're looking to lose weight, you can put yourself in more of a catabolic space. Again, if your body's healthy. What if you have, uh, again, if, if you have let's say blood pressure dysregularity, right? So you have higher blood pressure. And one of the reasons you have higher blood pressure is that there's um, plaque in your arteries. You have stenosis of the arteries. <clears throat> you have, um, what else? You're overweight. Okay. As long as it's controlled and potentially under medical supervision or someone that knows what they're doing, you might want to work out fasted right? You might want to get deeper into autophagy, which exercise can do for you. And that could potentially help with blood sugar. Okay. If you have higher blood sugar, you may want to work out fasted. If you wake up and your fasting glucose is over 95, you may want to work out fasted. Now I will tell you that a weight workout will typically not lower that blood sugar. It sometimes does it in reverse. I've talked about that before on episode, let's see here, let us see here, episode 2041. That was just one of the shows. But cardio, fasted cardio, not sprints, but fasted aerobic-based cardio has, in my clinical experience, lowered blood sugar better than anything else. 
I've tested it myself. I've tested many people in my practice, even those with diabetes. Fasted cardio at night or in the morning actually seems to help blood sugar the most. Makes sense too. You're not eliciting stress hormones, which would then spike blood sugar in your own body, even without food. And if you don't know how that happens, check out stephencabral.com forward slash BRMI for a webinar on that. Okay. Let's say that you're someone with lower levels of dopamine, more of the kapha body type, more of the endomorph. You're slow getting going in the morning. Your body's healthy, but you're slow getting going. You typically need caffeine to get the body moving. Well, instead of all that caffeine, you might do a nice weight workout or high-intensity interval training program to improve your dopamine levels to a healthy level and get normal stress levels. That's the next one. Increase cortisol. If you wake up and your cortisol is low, but you're not a vata body type, you're not more of the pitta body type, you're more of the kapha body type. Body type, you might run a little lower cortisol. Well, here's the thing a good weight training workout will increase those cortisol levels. So, you may want to work out fasted if you need to lose weight, lower blood sugar, potentially work on healthy levels of blood pressure, cardiovascular issues, increase dopamine or increase cortisol levels. All of these are reasons. This is how we use it in our particular uh, practice. Again, um, you can find these things out for yourself. Honestly, you can, the ones that we're talking about today, for the most part, you can just run what's called a stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. You can find that at stephencabral.com forward slash hormones dash test stephencabral.com forward slash hormones dash test. We can link that up at episode 2071 as well. Uh, that will, tell you what's going on right there. You can get a simple $20 glucometer right at home. All my resources are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. And you can also work with an integrative health practitioner for a more in-depth program as well. But remember, the truth is always out there. The truth is just never one side or the other. It doesn't always necessarily lie in the middle, but what it does is it's bio-individual based. Some people should be closer towards the left, some people over here closer to the right, and then you're able to base that on your unique needs, and those needs could actually change over time. If you lose all the weight that you need to, and now your focus is now on muscle building, well, you might stop doing fasted workouts, right? If you get your blood sugar back to normal, well, you may not do fasted workouts. You might just do an afternoon workout instead of your early morning workout, right? If you're... Um, blood sugar, I should say, if your cortisol levels are more balanced now, again, that's your choice. So exercise can actually work to help push your body in one way or the other. And that's why we need to look at it on a person to person basis. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much as always for tuning into the show. If you have any questions, always write in. And of course, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. 